Stan Jibalisco here, continuing our tutorial in regards to the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, 3rd edition. You'll find all the videos in this tutorial in the playlist on my YouTube channel entitled Beginner's Schematics. So let's just cut right to the chase. I've expounded on all of the benefits of this book. But let's just uh, go right to the subject matter at hand here because this might get a little bit cumbersome, at least for me to do. If you'll refer to page 92 in the hard copy of the book, and if you don't have the book, by the way, I really recommend you buy it, the paper-bound version, for your workbench. It'll, uh, it's a lot more workbench-friendly. If you'll refer to page 92, you will see the tuner, detector, and audio preamplifier stages of a crystal radio receiver uh, bolstered by this amplifier. So we actually have here a more complete radio receiver. But we can't fit the whole receiver with the power amplifier included on one page. So we have a page break between pages 92 and 93. And I have explained how that works. Here is the audio power amplifier. Now I've shown you all three of these circuits. This crystal uh, set radio receiver just a few videos ago. A few more videos ago uh, I showed you a broadband generic amplifier suitable for use as a preamplifier. And just recently, I, I think that just the last video, I showed you the push-pull audio power amplifier. Now suppose we want to connect all three of those things together in a chain to make a complete receiver. Well, we can do that, and in fact, if you look at the split between these two pages, 92 and 93, this is the complete receiver. And I've described how the, the circuits work, each one of them, so I won't go through that part again. What I want to expound upon is if you have a, a diagram that's just too big for one page or you're not comfortable trying to fit it on one page, you can make page breaks. So I'd like to take this same circuit and draw, and draw uh, some page breaks for you. But I'd like to take all three circuits, uh, the videos that I made for individually, and show how we can connect them together by means of these little page break things. They look like little wedges and we make designators for them. So here is our basic crystal set radio and this we want to send to a preamplifier. So let's add a couple of these little wedges here. Now this is the same scheme that I uh, expound about on pages 92 and 93, but it's a little bit different plan. Here are two wedges that go, now these are going to go to the input of the audio preamplifier, which uh, was way back in chapter 4, figure 4-17. Uh, and it is repeated again in chapter 5, pretty much the exact same generic circuit. Well, here's where these two wedges come from. Oops. I don't want to draw on my countertop. I think it would show up in the screen, but I don't want to have to be taking isopropyl alcohol to my countertop after this. It'll just confuse you anyway. Well, here's the two wedges that go like that. Well, now we got an output here. We got two more little wedges we'll add. And these are going to go to the input of the push-pull power amplifier. I wish these were in order, in sequential order, but such is life. So we got all these wedges. Now, but how are we going to know which wedge is which? Well, we can designate them by means of numbers or letters, or anything else, as long as we know what they mean. Let's use numbers here. In the book I used letters, let's use numbers. This is part A of the figure, so 
I don't want to really necessarily use more letters. Let's use numbers. One, two. Where do these go? Well, these go into the input of our broadband preamplifier. One, two. Now the outputs here we can call three, four. Where do they go? They go to the input of this thing right here. Now we want to make sure that we connect ground to ground and signal to signal. We don't want to reverse them. So we have to make it clear which side of this transformer is the grounded side. and It's going to be this side 4 because that was the ground in the previous circuit. Now I'm going to do a little something that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Ripping up some paper. so that all these diagrams will appear in sequence. I can just stack them up A, B, C. And so as not to confuse you, well, let's see. Here's a full wave power supply. Let's leave that one there for the moment, okay? Here we got drawings a, B, and C. One, two, out from there. One, two, in from here. We've got ground to ground, and signal to signal. All right. Three, four, go out into the uh, power amplifier. This is the preamplifier. Three, four, ground to ground, signal. <laughs> signal to signal, okay, ground to ground. You can you can see that. All right, so now we got all three of these. But we got another one here, too. Suppose that, well, this one doesn't need any power, so we can dismiss that. But this preamplifier needs plus 12 volts. Aha, where can we get that? Well, we can connect a couple of lander and batteries in series. But... If you're going to have a power amplifier that provides an awful lot of audio volume, you're probably going to run out of juice with those kind of things pretty quick. You don't want to use an automotive battery or a marine battery. Really, the best thing to use is a power supply. And notice this power supply, which I described in another video, 12 volts DC. Well, the ground here, let's just assume that all these chassis grounds go to the same chassis. We put the power supply and all three of these other circuits on the same chassis, so every single one of these chassis grounds is going to go to that aluminum chassis. Or, if you really want to get highfalutin, a copper chassis. You don't see very many of those, even in old radios, but I remember the Drake... Uh, ham radio line of equipment had copper chassis or copper chassises. The T4X, the R4A, those venerable old 1960s radios. That brings back memories. But here's a positive 12 volts. Well, how convenient is that? Five. Okay. Well, we got our Class A broadband amplifier, which serves as the preamplifier. Five. There's our 12 volts for that. And we've got our push pull audio amplifier. Here we need 12 volts. Five. Okay, so all these fives are connected to each other on all three of these pages. This one, the crystal radio, doesn't need any power. But the, the broadband amplifier does. And there it is. They all connect together. The fives all go to the same point in the circuit. So that is how I've actually uh, built a complete radio receiver on circuit diagrams for you here on four different pages. And uh, you, you can get confused that way, maybe. 
but not if you have those little wedges. They, they save everything. They save everything. So there you be. You've got the whole banana all, all done. I guess I'll call this part D of the same system. So that's it. Now as for what the component values actually are, well if you want to build one of these things and tweak and test and be a little bit of a tinkerer, be my guest. Look up some generic circuits on the internet, get a good idea of what the component values should be and then build it and tweak it and take it from there and good luck. Stan Gibalisco signing off from the White Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Once again, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, I highly recommend it. Beginner's Guide to Drawing Schematics 2, 3rd edition, edited by me, previous editions, courtesy of Traster and Lisk. Until next time, so long.